So we start with 10 grams of ammonia. We want to get rid of the grams of ammonia and get two moles of ammonia. So how much is ammonia? What's the molar mass of ammonia? 16.023. I think you're off by one. So we'll call it 17. Then, what's our swinging door called? Mole ratio. We want to get to moles of hydrogen. We're changing rooms. What's the ratio of hydrogen to ammonia? Hydrogen to ammonia is 3 to 2. Now, finally, we want to get 2 grams of hydrogen from moles. <clears throat> How much does hydrogen gas weigh? Two. Now, we cross out what we can. Now, I have a two up here and a two down here. Can I simplify that? Right here and right here. So I can simplify this down. So now, I have 10 times 3 divided by 17. Somebody do that. Ten times three divided by 17. 1.78. All right. Now, so this is a mass to mass. You multiply by the inverse of the molar mass or divide by it, however you want to look at it. Multiply by the mole ratio, then by the molar mass of what you're going to. Now, this part C here is, looks difficult, but it's not. What's the equation for percent yield? Hmm? Does that work? No. Go on. Go, 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 go and listen. I am. I'm, lo I'm looking at your screen right now and I can see what you're doing. All right. All right. Percent yield. What's the equation for it? It's the easiest equation you got, practically. Hmm. So what's what over what? Actual over expected. Actual over expected. Expected times a hundred. Now it says if the reaction in B actually produced. So where is that number going? On the top. Where's my expected amount? right here because it says that's what we wanted to produce now any experiment you do you will never get what you expect unless you do it absolutely perfect <laughs> you know you can get close but it's very hard to get a hundred percent so this is going to be an 87.9 percent yield All right. This looked like you had to do a bunch of extra stuff, but they'd already done most of it for you. So look for keywords. Actually produced. That will give you your top number. Wanted to produce. That's your expected. Now, tomorrow, here. 
Number two. Limiting reactant. Now, look here. We got what's the limiting reactant? What's the excess reactant? And then I look in problem two. How many grams of ammonia should you get? So when you do the math up here in A, you are going to get the answer for B. Because down here they want grams of ammonia, so let's do it up here and make it one big problem. So we're starting with 10 grams of nitrogen. Remember, it's N2. And we're starting with 3 grams of hydrogen. I'm going to hit pause. Remember, you're, you're looking for grams of ammonia in both cases. <coughs> the help. All right. How many conversion factors? Somebody tell me how to fill them in. When it's grams to grams, it's always three. If it's moles to mass, it's two. If it's mass to moles, it's two. If it's moles to moles, it's just one. All right. Somebody fill this in that's not Connor, Haley, or Fortuna. <laughs> you don't get to fill this in. Because you already know what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I want the people not listening to fill it in. I'm not listening. Okay, guys, so we start with getting to moles of nitrogen from grams of nitrogen. N2 weighs 28. Then we go through our door to get to moles of ammonia from nitrogen. And the ratio is 2 to 1. Then we get to grams of ammonia from moles of ammonia. Get rid of all the units we don't need. And then also we got 2 over 28, which we can simplify to 1 over... 14. All right. So we basically have 10 times 17 divided by 14. What do you get? Twelve point one four. Twelve point one four. No. <laughs> All right. Now on the next part. Let's look at this. When you're doing a limiting reactant problem, part of it stays the same. And the part that stays the same is the second half when we go to ammonia. Because we're going this, to the same place So all you're doing is changing the front half here. All right. And does everybody see that? On a mass to mass limiting reactant ex excess, you have to do all the parts. But the second half that I left in blue here stays the same. And 
we get rid of all the units we don't need. We got 2 over 2, which becomes 1 over 1. We got 3 over 3, and so this comes out to be 17 grams. Now, which one is the limiting reactant? Which one do we make the least of? Which one? Nitrogen. Now, here's the question. How many grams of ammonia should I get or should you get? <coughs> What's the most we can make here with what we have? Yep. 12. Once the nitrogen's gone, we can't make more than 12.14 grams of NH3. The limiting reactant will answer the next question. How many grams should you get? 12. Now, here we go. How many grams of excess? Our excess was hydrogen. How much how many grams of hydrogen we start with? <coughs> we start with three grams. Now, and I will switch pin colors because that's a little light. We are we know that our limiting reactant is the nitrogen. If what you got to list, what you got to ask here is, how much am I going to have left over? Here, here's what happens. If I start with 10 grams of nitrogen, how much hydrogen do I actually need? Because once I run out of nitrogen, I'm going to have leftover hydrogen. So, what you're going to do is figure, take your limiting reactant and figure out how many grams of hydrogen will be used up during that process. So this becomes a mass to mass again. Same process. And then we want to get to the grams of hydrogen that are going to be used up. What's the ratio of hydrogen to nitrogen? Three to one. Eliminate units we don't need. We could simplify some of these numbers if we wanted to. 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into 28 14 times. 2 goes into 10 5 times, 2 goes into 4 or 10. It goes in there 7 times. You you don't have to do this simplification, but it makes your life easier. So what you have is 5 times 3 divided by 7. So what do you get? 15 divided by 7. 2 something. 2.14. Now what this says is if I start with my 10 grams of nitrogen, if I start with my 10 grams of nitrogen, this is how much hydrogen I'm going to use up. How much did we start with? We started with 3 grams. We used up 2.14 grams. How much is left over? 0.86 grams of hydrogen. Now, the last one here, 
<clears throat> gets a little crazy. I will look and see. I don't think there is. But this is not difficult. It says you have 5,000 kilograms of ammonia, 5,000 kilograms of oxygen, and 5,000 grams of methane. The problem is <clears throat> everything we do is in grams per mole, correct? So 5,000 kilograms is equal to what? How many grams? Five million because there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So add three more zeros. And here is this problem is long. Yeah, and on your calculator, you can make this 5 times 10 to the 6th, all right, <clears throat> grams. So what they want to know is what's the mass of hydrogen cyanide you're going to make and what is the mass of water. So let's go through this. It's a limiting reactant problem but you got to do three different reactants. Once you figure out the limiting reactant, then you only have to do one more problem after that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 5.0 times 10 to the sixth grams of ammonia and convert it to grams of HCN. The only thing that's weird about this problem is that big number out in front. Everything else stays the same. Ammonia still weighs 17 grams per mole. The molar masses don't change. We want to get to moles of hydrogen cyanide from moles of ammonia. And then we want to get to grams of HCN from moles of HCN. What's the ratio of Hydrogen cyanide to ammonia. Two to two. What is HCN weigh? H plus C plus N. We got one plus twelve plus fourteen. And somebody said like a question mark over there. 27. Now, get rid of units we don't need. 2 over 2 is what? So we don't need that. Now, this is where it gets weird on your calculator. Here's how you punch this in on your calculator. Five, use the EE -E key. Six times 27, enter. And I always say hit the enter key because you're not sure how it's going to do the order of operations. Divided by 17. All right. The EE -E key automatically puts times 10 to the sixth in there. Use this key. I don't know why or if they taught you in math. If So what do you get for this answer? Seven 
1,941,176. All right, give me the first three numbers. Seven, nine, four. Go one more. One. All right, what I did is she said 7,941,000. When I say 7 million, I can say times 10 to the 6th. All right, so I just put a decimal and did that. So this is 7, let's just call it 7.9 times 10 to the 6th. You're going to redo this problem again for oxygen and methane. You're starting out with the same numbers. You're going to start with oxygen. You're going to have three conversion factors, but the end will always be the same. It's going to be two moles of HCN. It's going to be the 27 grams of HCN over one mole of HCN. But what will change is the oxygen. What's the mole, mole ratio for oxygen there? It gets a 3. How much does O2 weigh? 32. So, once again, you're going to work through this. 5.0 EE. 6 times 2 times 27, hit your enter key, divided by 32, divided by 3 should give you your answer. Somebody get a number? Yep. 2.1, what? 2.812 times 10 to the 6, correct? So, that number goes up here. So you have to do this again one more time now for the methane. But, once again, the back half does not change. If that's the biggest thing I can get across to you when you're doing these limiting reactants, the second half that I'm leaving in red here <laughs> does not change once you do the second, third, or fourth problems. Only thing that changes is the front half. Somebody want to tell me what methane weighs? You got a carbon and four oxygens. How much is it weigh? A carbon and four ox hydrogens, I mean, carbon and four hydrogens, sorry. 16. All right. And what's the number in front of the CH4 in the equation? 2. Can we simplify? Get rid of stuff that doesn't belong. 2 over 2 is 1 over 1. So it's going to be 5 EE 6 times 27. Enter. Divided by 16. And what do you get? <clears throat> 
Hey, Lee, what do you get? All right, so which one is the limiting reactant? We got an answer of 2.8, 8.3, and 7.9. Which one's the limiting reactant? Haley. Um, the O2. The O2. Now, the O2 is the limiting reactant. So, the question comes back to what mass of hydrogen cyanide are we going to make and how much water are we going to make? So, this is how much HCN we're going to make because it's limited by the amount of oxygen. <laughs> And if oxygen's our limiting reactant, that will limit how much water we make. So you only have to do one more problem here. You take the oxygen, and do one more problem. But with this time, you're doing it with water at the end. So, one mole over this. You want the ratio of water to oxygen. And then converting to grams of water. What's the ratio of H2O to O2 up there in the equation? H2O to O2. Six to three. So we can once again get rid of stuff. We can kind of simplify here. And so now you're going to do 5.0 EE key, 6 times 2 times 18, enter, and divided by 32. So which one, or what's that come out to be? Abs, you got it? Anybody? The last one, the last math, last math I did here. <coughs> I got it. Two well, times eight one two. Times ten to the sixth. So that's grams of water you made. All right. Now, this is kind of a crazy process here, so you want to know how much you're going to make. Ammonia, bad if you smell it. Methane, blows up in the presence of water. Hydrogen cyanide, deadly gas. Only safe thing here is water, but you're making a million, you're making 2.8 million grams of it, oh, which... Sorry. Oh, wait a minute. I did the wrong one. I looked at the wrong one. Oh. 5.63, let's call it. Yeah. So you're making a lot of water, too. 